Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome in to the Gramlich and MacLean podcast, episode 271, and we are presented by our great friends over at Ingles. Well, it's another solo intro for me. Mac handled the interview. Mac is really doing the heavy lifting here for the pod. I appreciate it very much. The last two weeks with all that's going on with March Madness have been absolutely insane. I was actually scheduled to do this interview with Kalaji Kansi and Mac, and then something really cool came up. And so we'll update you guys about that this week. And Mac is, as I'm recording this on Selection Sunday, before I'm getting ready to go in to ESPN Studios here in Bristol, Mac is in Seattle doing an XFL game for the Seattle Sea Dragons, which to me is one of the greatest mascots of all time. So we do have a great interview for you today with Kalaji Kansi, who we talked about a lot in our next episode as well, recapping the combine. Kalaja had a ridiculously good combine, and he is, of course, the defensive tackle from Pittsburgh, who had an incredible career, was incredibly productive, did hurt his shoulder towards the end of the season. So there were some questions about that. He wasn't able to play in Pitt's bowl game, but I think he answered a lot of those questions at the combine. And we get into this, and Mac asked this question right off the bat, as he should. Kalaja Kansi ran a 4.6740, which was the fastest 40 for a defensive tackle, a nearly 300-pound man and the fastest 40 by a defensive tackle since 2003, in the last 20 years. We asked him how on earth he did that. This guy is one of both me and Mac's favorite players um, from just covering the ACC over the past couple of years. He is a pit guy. He is pit made. He reps pit. And I think a lot of the success that Pitt's had defensively in the NFL is going to help him. And he's also garnering a lot of comparisons to Aaron Donald, which you know, you'll take, I think, if you're Kalaja Kansi. So you guys are going to love this interview. First things first, though, I have to tell you about our great friends over at Ingles. And I've been traveling a lot recently. As you might know, Mac's been traveling as well. So it can be tough when you're on the road to eat healthy. And that's why when I go home, I try to eat as healthy as possible. And I go over to my local Ingles and I go to the salad bar. I am obsessed with the Ingles salad bar. If you ever listen to me on the roar back in the day when I used to talk about Ingles, I talked about the salad bar all the time. I used to go to the salad bar for Ingles for lunch like four times a week. It's so easy. It's so affordable. You can get a great salad for six or seven dollars loaded up on there with everything. And that's what I did just this past week. Went over to my local Ingles in Greenville, South Carolina, got that amazing salad bar. Also got a little Starbucks just because, you know, it's just that kind of day, a treat yourself kind of day. And I actually put together a, a cool video about that. So check out on social media, at Kelly Gramlich, on Instagram, on Twitter. Um, Mac also got in the fold there. Mac, Mac, he enjoyed the salad video, but you know Mac is ready to grill some meat, and that's going to be our next video. We've got more of Mac's recipes coming at you because Ingles has such a good selection of USDA choice beef, and Mac is literally salivating, waiting until he's home and for a long enough period of time to cook some meat and, and grab that meat at Ingles. So just stay tuned for all that to come and check out some of that fun content and if you need something for lunch today, if you're listening right now and you're thinking, hmm, an Ingle salad sounds pretty darn good, I would suggest if you're in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee, Georgia, that's where a lot of their locations are, find your local Ingles and go hit up that salad bar. They also do curbside pickup, which is really big, which is something that uh, uh, they've embraced and they want to make things easier for their customers. So before we get to our interview with Pitt legend and first round hopeful, Kalijah Kansi, let's hear this message from Ingalls on how great they are with their curbside pickup. It's time to discover the convenience and time savings of contact-free pickup with Ingalls Curbside. Just visit shop.ingalls-markets.com or download the app, and your Ingalls personal shopper gets to work with specialized training on how to select the freshest items for a pre-scheduled pickup. They'll even text you with updates. You pull up to a designated space and your personal shopper delivers your items right to your vehicle. Fresh, fast, and affordable. It's all in the bag. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. Obviously, I've covered you your whole career, um, you know, being on ACC Network, and you've got to see you up close and personal, and you know, the terror that you are on the football field. But I, I even have to admit, we did another episode. I got to admit, I didn't think for six. I mean, my goodness, I knew you were fast. Did, did, did you expect that? I know you're from Miami, and you guys are a little fast down there, but did you, did you expect four six? Yeah, I expect before six. Uh, that's <laughs> something we've been training, uh, something I did at Pitt. Um, 
in the summertime of 2022. So I, I expect it for six. That was my standard. <laughs> That's incredible, man. Just the explosion. And, and I mean, people were blown away. I mean, the, the, the fastest, you know, defensive tackle since 2003. I mean, what does that mean to, to have that associated with your name? I mean, the history books forever, you know, you're going to be right there. Man, that's big time. Um, that's, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure for my name to be up there with, with that. Um, and I just want to thank God. That's awesome, man. I love to see it. All right, let's back up a little bit. We're, we're going to talk some more NFL stuff, some some combine, your experience, and things of that nature. But uh, I, I want to stay on the pit side here for a second because, man, you, you had a heck of a career, and, and it was so fun watching you. And, and, you know, coming in, I remember talking with Jalen Twyman, my guy, and, and, you know, he was on his way out, and he said, listen, there's this cat, young boy, number eight. You know, he's my young bull. He's going to be the next man up. And then surely, I mean, you just burst onto the scene. So let's go way, way back. I mean, well, why did you pick Pittsburgh? You're, you're a Miami guy. You go all the way up north where it's cold and snow. Walk me through kind of, you know, how all that happened. First off, it, it all started from Coach Charlie Partridge. He came down to my high school yeah. summer of my senior year, visit me, and he told me he didn't like me. That, and he, and that kind of something, that's something that kind of um, stuck with me. Then, like a week, a week or two later, he ended up getting me up for an official visit up in the summertime, which was March, because I didn't know how cold to get in Pittsburgh. <laughs> and I, when I got up, I got up there to Pittsburgh. Like everything was like it was nice. It was different, but it was like it was nice. Uh, all the people was like genuine. I felt like as if I was on the team already, and it was something that I I really liked. That's amazing. That's amazing. And how about like just the the defensive prominence? I mean, they've had so many guys. Obviously, everybody knows you know Aaron Donald, but but Weaver and Patrick Jones and you know again Twyman, all these guys that have just been there and rolling through you know kind of this program. Was that something that was attracted to you? I know you just mentioned Coach P. Honestly, those those were, those were the guys that I was practicing with every day and yeah. learning from every day, and and I know those guys was gonna do um, good next level and be great. Uh, just just by watching them approach approach the day, uh, whether if it's off the field or on the field. So, talk to me about the the quarterback killers, man, because you guys at Pitt. I mean, it's just what you do. Uh, you, you get after the quarterback. You've been, like, top three in the country, it seems like, for the last five years or so. Uh, what, walk me through just the mindset with that and, and who's in the group. Is anybody out of the group? What, what does that look like? No, nah, once, you, once you're a member of QBK, man, you always <laughs> – uh, it, It's just something that we, we, we came about, and we wanted, we wanted to terrorize the other quarterback. Uh, and our goal was to – to cause havoc in the backfield, so we we came up with quarterback killer. <laughs> it works. It works. You did that, man. Sixteen times in your career, you know, seven apiece in these last two years, seven and a half this past season. Uh, we, we had Haba. I told you that we had Haba to to start the season, and yeah, you know, we were kind of asking him, are, "Are you guys, you know, how much of a competition is it? Are you are you fighting with each other to get to the QB? What what's kind of your mindset when hey?" You know, Coach Coach Narduz or, or Coach P, man, they've dialed it up. We know it's going to be a big pressure. How do you ensure that you're the first guy there? Like right before we take the field, we all all like, <laughs> who's going to get the first sack or who's going to like get the big play, and, like competing against each other but making each other better at the same time. Wow, how yeah. fun! <laughs> I, I love that man. Let, let me. I want to go into Coach P just a little bit more because uh, I love that guy and I think he's. He's one of the best to ever do it uh, and, and obviously has done some really cool stuff with y'all at Pittsburgh, but he seems like just such a player's coach. And, and when I saw him jump in that freaking river, when it's like 20 degrees outside uh, because one of y'all had a hat trick, had three, it might've been you, you might've been the one to do it. Uh, well, how is he as, as just a person, as a man? And then tell me a little bit as a coach on the field. Uh, coach Charlie Partridge was great as a coach, even better as a man. Uh, he teaches us to be, to be not only a, a good football player but a great person, and, and every day he always he always holds us accountable, whether it's off the field or on the field. And yeah, that's something that we appreciate as as his players. Uh, we kind of need that. Uh, I would say, like us as defensive line uh, 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 players, we kind of need that that father figure and coach. Sure, he's there for that. 
Yeah. I, I mean, it's just something that is, man, it's so obvious. It's just when, when you meet him and, and I see the relationship with you guys and, and joking when it's time to be funny, but then really locking in when it's time to work and, and just, I don't know, man. I, I feel like you guys are just one of the best in the country. And I see that each and every year it's going to continue to grow. So kind of with that question of, those guys that I mentioned earlier that you said you've been grinding with and now it's kind of been you and Haba and Deslin and you know John Morgan, all those guys, well, now you're gone. And, and it's this next wave. Uh, before we jump into more of, of you in the NFL, who, who can Pitt fans, who can ACC fans, you know, look out to really terrorize people on that defensive line moving forward? Man, that defensive line room is loaded. <laughs> From defensive end to defensive first screen, the third screen, they, they load it. Coach, Coach Charlie Parches did a great job developing us as our time, over over the time at Pitt, and I feel like, in my opinion, every defense alignment in that room is ready to go play. That's awesome. That's awesome. How, like mentality wise, because I think what you just mentioned there is, you know, probably what makes Pitt, you know, a little bit more unique than others, uh, and, and that's the ability for multiple guys to play. Like you, you know, could you could be out there every play. But you don't have to because there's other guys. There's other guys, you know, waiting their opportunity. And that, that just helps you, I feel like, go 110% because you know the next guy coming in is still going to be able to play to the standard. How, like, attitude-wise, I guess, do you guys do that, where there's no selfishness in who's playing and who's not? We all just – we all go out there and have fun. We just got – we have fun playing a game of football, and, and we enjoy it. And we all – we all hold each other accountable. That's something that he – Coach Partridge instilled in our room for us to just hold each other accountable and make our presence felt. So it, you did that. <laughs> you whether, made it, you made it felt. whether if it's me or if it's a, a third or fourth screen, even a, a tackle or defensive end on the field, we're going to support each other. We're going to coach each other, and they're going to tell me how I did wrong, how I could have been better. I'm going to do the same. That, that's awesome, man. That, that's awesome. And, and so, you know, you, you mentioned that of, of just getting better and those guys that you played with and, you know, seeing how they worked and understand what it takes to be great and, and to get that the level, you know, that you were able to get to. I mean, first team All-American, unanimous. I mean, the, the, the pit has more of those than anybody else. I mean, you just you come to there and that's what you do. Uh, you know, a finalist for a bunch of different awards, uh, ACC Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, when you came to Pitt, were those your goals? Did you have that in mind? Or were you just thinking, hey, I'm going to do whatever I can, the best I can, I'm going to get to whatever that might be? When I first got to Pitt, my, my main thing was to play. Like, I just came from high school where I was the man. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I got to be the man here at college. But what slowed me down was that I didn't I didn't learn the playbook and I wasn't I wasn't mature and I, I, I was mm. and I had to I had to come to my senses and be be real with myself. And uh, just red shirt, take the year, take the year off, uh, get stronger, get bigger, get faster, and then learn how to play so that I could be able to play at my highest ability. Walk me through that because I, I think that's a little bit – that's hard to do, man, especially when you're a good player and especially when you think that, you know, we're so young, right? Like I came in red shirt. I thought I was the man as well. Yes. And you're just not ready. It's a different game. So – what, what was that like? Was it sitting down with Coach P? Was it you and, and your your brothers? Like, how did you come to the conclusion that I, I've got some work to do on myself first before I can get on that field? It started. It started from I, I, I felt it through practice, um, being able to like win win the reps, but not know what I'm doing, and hmm. and that kind of that kind of that's something that kind of like bothered me. Like I didn't know, yeah. what I was doing, but I was able to make plays. Which was which was a good thing, but also it was a bad thing because it could hurt the team. Mm -hmm. So I had to I had to learn the playbook in order to play faster, in order to make more plays or bigger plays. So that's why I decided to redshirt. Yeah, man, that, that's that's a that's a big boy move to be able to do that. Because what I mean, we all want to play. I mean, that, that's why we came come to school. That's why we do you know this sport. It's not to to practice. You know, we we don't play football to just practice or, or lift or things of that nature. Uh, so that, that's super impressive, man. And then. You know, you evolve into this this amazing playmaker. The things you're able to do, all this hype, all this excitement, and then you get to the combine and you know you deliver. That that was the next step. And and I know people are critical. Like it's the NFL draft. They're going to try to pick anything to to not pay you, right? Like that's their job. Uh, and, and they're saying size, and we don't know if he can do this. And then you just blow it out of the water, and, and you show them that you're able to do this. What was your NFL combine experience like? My NFL combine experience was great. 
I met a lot of a lot of great players, a lot of great coaches. Following seeing the people that I played against, uh, who I played with, and it was just it was just a great experience. How about what? What was your favorite moment? Like, was it running that four six? Was it meeting with a particular team or coach? What What was like when you got there and you're like, "Daggum, th- this is it. I, I, this is the NFL combine. I've dreamed of this my whole life." I think my favorite moment of the combine was just like being at that stadium, seeing like because I <laughs> combine almost every, and also like just seeing the coaches that like I play a lot of Madden, so like I'll see the coach, <laughs> and I'll be like, "All right." I use on my or this the coach that I seen on the game or so it was just crazy for me to like just be there at the stadium and see the see the coaches that I've seen who I've always like watched on games and stuff like that TV and just be at that stadium myself from watching from home. <laughs> so, so, I can't even imagine. I mean, it's such a surreal moment to you know work so hard your whole life, and I know draft day is going to be a whole nother one. Uh, once you get there, when, when you hear some of those things that I mentioned uh, about size or about things of this nature, even though you've done so much and, and you've proved it on the field, what, what what is your answer to that? If if people, I know teams probably don't ask you straight up, but when, when you hear and see things about questioning your size, what, what goes through your head? What, what do you feel about that stuff? I just got to continue to prove myself right. Uh, I'm not I'm not I'm doing this to prove anyone wrong. And I just got to prove myself right. I got to believe in myself, and and I'll be all right. That's right. That's right. I love that, man. I, I proved myself right. You know, it's it's not about anybody else, you know, but me, but you, and in the way you approach every day. What, what what's your favorite part of your game? Because I feel like, man, people see that speed who, who maybe haven't watched your entire career as closely as as some, and they think, okay, he's just an edge rusher, but. Man, you're a wrecking ball in there on on run support. I mean, I was watching the Tennessee game the other day, and you're tossing guys, one arm stiff, strong arm, getting them out of the way. So, what what is your favorite piece of of what Kalijah Kansi does? My favorite part of my game is is my I want to say my my shedding, like block shedding, like when, <laughs> when I make contact with the offensive line, do their momentum against them and shed them. I think that's the that's the, that's the favorite part of my game. How do you have a feel for, like, how do you know? I mean, because, again, I played the position, I played offensive line, and, you know, I always felt like I had the solid base and I, I could never get shucked. But it, it happened a couple times. I'm not going to say often. But h- how do you read that where you know, okay, you know, I, I can get this guy. I can swing his hips. I can get him going another way. If I could feel him leaning, if I could feel, like, a, a lot of weight, like if his, if his shoulders is over his toes, then I'm going to I'm snatch right away. Yeah. Yeah, or, man, it's it's just something. Go ahead. Go or ahead. if it's or if it's pass, if I could fit him like sumo, uh, uh, not sumo, but what or sumo, I could sure or either uh, either um bull hopping. Then I, that's when I know to snatch. <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a wrap at that point. Yeah. How about move wise? Uh, cause cause I think another thing that man, I've just I'm, I'm so impressed when you do film study and, and again watching you and, and having had that kind of foundation there. What, what's your go to move if, if it's Third and ten, games on the line. We're, we're trying to win a game for for Pitt or for my next, you know, NFL team, and I got to beat this guy. Not knowing what he's going to do, do, do you kind of have a go to that I, this is going to work? I know this is going to work. Uh, yeah, if he's a low hand puncher, I'm going cross chop. If he's a high hand puncher, I'm going double swipe. <laughs> You're ready, Auto- automatic. It doesn't matter. <laughs> that, that's awesome, man. Well, you told me you were in Frisco, Texas, before we started this thing. You've been training out there. How different has that been, you know, versus football? Because it's not like you're going out and playing. You're not going to practice. I mean, you, you strictly have been training for a 40-yard dash, a, a vertical jump, a bench press, and that's it. Has it been weird? Has it been interesting? And, you know, what kind of stuff and who's out there with you? Yeah, uh, I'm out here training at uh, Sports Academy in Frisco, Texas. And the, for me, my, my training experience was a little different than everyone else's because mm-hmm. I had the shoulder injury. So my main focus was getting the shoulder 100% so I could be able to even compete at the combine. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got cleared about three, three and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago. Wow. So my main, my, my, my second priority was like working on a 40 because that's, that was like the only thing I had time for. Mm-hmm. I didn't do anything else at the combine. So I was just focusing on my 40. And yeah. Every day you just gotta you gotta you gotta be consistent and you gotta keep your head high even when you're not feeling well because it was time mm-hmm. like man my shoulders don't feel like how it used to but yeah. 
I gotta attack this rehab. I gotta get it stronger, and I gotta go work on my forty. So, yeah, it was just it was just being being resilient and, and keeping your head high and, and staying positive. Honestly, yeah. Who do you? What is your why? Like, what, what do you lean on in times like that, or when you redshirt? I'm sure those were tough times where you know the team's going to to you know North Carolina for the weekend, and, and you're at home. Uh, you know, you, who who did you lean on? What's your support like? What, what is your? Why do you play football so well? I want to thank the University of Pittsburgh first, because now when I had my when I had my injury and my surgery and everything, everyone from the, from that whole entire like university supported me. Wow, and was there for me if I needed anything. Then I had a lot of former teammates or, or, or active teammates that 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 went through this process, so they knew they knew what was going on. They knew how to, to guide me through this and, and what to tell me and, and how I would be better and stronger. So I yeah. thank the University of Pittsburgh for that. And then honestly, just just being able to just 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 recover and, and get back stronger, I feel I feel great. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's great when you you know you make those decisions, and, and coaches talk about it all the time. Former players talk about it all the time. But man, it's a family. When when you decide to join X University um, for a majority of the parts, uh, you know. The, they're your guys, and that's cool to hear that. And, and I expect nothing less from that university and, and Coach Narduzzi and everybody kind of around there. All right, let's move forward, man. What, what's going on next? So you you said you're headed home, I assume, or headed back to Pittsburgh. Well, what are you going to be doing until you know pro day comes up? Um, I'll be I'll still be training up until pro day comes up. Uh, I'm I'm gonna do everything at pro day besides. Oh, great. So I'll be training for everything. That's awesome. Are you going back home? Where will you be training? Kind of looking forward to that. I'll be staying in Pittsburgh. Okay, so where it was all started, man. You, you got to stay there with your guys. Um, and, and then pro day happens. You're going to take a break. You're going to enjoy yourself a little bit. What what kind of you know pro day to draft? I know that's a long time, and there'll be some some workouts and things in there. But how do you imagine that time kind of going? Yeah, I'm gonna be. In, I'm gonna still be in Pittsburgh. Rolling. I love that, man. <laughs> Just working. That's all you know how to do. I, I feel you. How about your guys there? I know Haba was talking. I saw him post, man. He said, uh, you know, someone had messaged him and said, hey, after the combine, take a week off. And, you know, he posts a picture in the gym. He's like, what's that? I, I mean, the, the work ethic that you guys have, wh where does that all come from at that defensive line? Man, that just comes from wanting to be, wanting to be the best at your position. Wanting to be the the best on the team or in in, a, in a, the conference, just wanting to be the best, um, just competing every day. I think yeah. that's where that come from. Yeah, yeah. All right, last one for you, my man. You, you, you've established yourself on the field. You obviously tested extremely well. I know you met with those teams, but you know, just tell me the, the NFL team or franchise that gets you and drafts you. What are they getting out of Kalaja Kansi? The NFL team that gets me is going to get a baller. They're going to get a a guy that can they can depend on, and a guy that's going to get them off the field on third down. That's what I like to hear, man. Hey, I appreciate you, brother. This was a ton of fun. Uh, good luck, and, and can't wait to hear your name called, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. That is Kalaj McKenzie with Eric McLean. Cannot wait to see where his name is called in the NFL draft. I think it's very possible that he's going to find his way into the late first round, early second round. Both Mac and I think he's going to be an absolute steal in this draft. And whichever team gets him, despite the fact that he's only six foot one, which is what people, you know, the the, the only knock on him really, um, he's a freak running that four point six seven forty. And I think he's going to make a team very happy. And I'm excited to follow his career when he gets to the NFL. Coming up on Wednesday, we are starting our ACC Spring Ball updates. We're going to have a few episodes in there before the NFL draft. And we're talking about the Combine. We're recapping the 10 guys that we thought really impressed from the ACC at the Combine. And uh, there's quite a few big names in there. We give our sleepers and we give our, our guy who really won the Underwear Olympics. It may have been the guy that we just talked to, at least for one of us. So make sure you check that out. If you missed our interview with another defensive lineman in KJ Henry, check that out from last week. Go to YouTube, subscribe there. Go to Apple Podcasts, subscribe there. Follow along on Twitter for all sorts of stuff. You never know where Mac and I are going to be. This week is March Madness craziness. I'm doing some first four studio. Then I've got a first and second rounds. We'll see where I end up. And, of course, Mac is literally all over the place with the XFL. But keep it locked right here where we talk football, ACC football 24-7 on the Graham Lincoln Mac Lane podcast presented by Ingles. 
We appreciate you listening, as Mac would say. Until next time, we'll see y'all. Thank you.